here's a little workflow that you can use if you want to show the distribution of something and where people or things come from. In this case, I have got all the starters and substitutes from Manchester City's team in the 2023 Champions League final. And to get that, all I did is I just went to the Wikipedia page for the Champions League final in 2023. I looked down at the team list and then for the individual players, I looked at their place of birth and then I got the coordinates from Google Maps and I also added in the coordinates for the Ataturk Stadium in Istanbul and also the Etihad Stadium in Manchester. So the venue that the game was played at and the home ground of the team. And in Google Maps and other online map services, you can just right click on a map and if you click the coordinates, they'll be copied to your clipboard. So you can assemble a data set that way. There's various ways you can do this, but if I go to a player like Ederson, it will have his place of birth as Osasco and we can use that information and just get coordinates. So the data set was assembled that way and all we did in Excel was add that information, place of birth, X and Y coordinates in separate columns, also for the home ground of Manchester City, X and Y coordinates in separate columns, and then the stadium in Istanbul, X and Y coordinates in separate columns. So that's saved as a CSV. I've already saved that. So what I'll do now is just go to QGIS and I'm gonna click on the Open Data Source Manager button and then I need to go to the delimited text section and in the file name, I'll go to the browse button and browse to the folder where that CSV is. So I've added that file in and then there's a couple of things to check here. The format is CSV. In geometry definition, it's point coordinates. I'll come back to that in a second. And records and fields options, it should be this by default, but there's a box that says first record has field names because my first row has the column names in it and that's fine. And in point coordinates, it doesn't really matter too much at the moment because we're not gonna use these actual locations to map the data. We're gonna use a geometry generator but an X field, it recognizes that there's an X value in the column called Ataturk X and Ataturk Y. So I'll leave that as it is, that's fine. The only other thing is we've got lots of names from different parts of the world. So sometimes the character encoding for non-English names, if you're using an English machine, can look a bit strange. So I've changed the encoding here to Unicode so that the characters display properly. Okay, so that's fine. And if I click add, it's just gonna add loads of points in the same place. And when you when you do this, sometimes you'll see a circle that doesn't quite look like a dot. And that's usually when you've got multiple points in the same place. So if I select this, down in the bottom left, I can see there's 24 features selected. That's fine though, because I'm gonna create a kind of distribution type map with a geometry generator. I'll do that now by double clicking on the layer to go to layer properties. And in symbology, it's on single symbol. That's fine. I just wanna click simple marker and in symbol layer type, I'm gonna change it from simple marker to geometry generator. And we want to make this, instead of being points, we wanna make it lines that show where the players come from. So their place of birth, and we want to draw lines from there to the Ataturk Stadium in Istanbul. So in order to do that, we need to change the geometry type to line string. And then I'll just click on the little expression button and we'll put together our expression step by step. So first of all, we can delete the geometry text. And the next thing is in the box where we can search for expressions and functions we're gonna look for make line because we're gonna make a line. So I'll double click that and we're gonna make a line between two points. Now I usually hit enter a couple of times just so I've got more white space. It's easier to read as well. The next one is make point. So we want to make a line and the line's gonna be between two points. And the first point 
if we go to our fields and values, the first point is going to be from the place of birth. So the place of birth x coordinate and the place of birth y coordinate. And these are coming from columns in our CSV. So that's the first point. I'll put a comma in and hit enter a couple of times. I'll do the same thing again. Make point. And I'll make my second point the Ataturk Stadium x coordinate and then the y coordinate. And I'll close those brackets. I'll hit enter to put it in a new line and I'll close the brackets completely. Now, if it's not correct, you'll see expression is invalid in the preview section. When I close the brackets, we see the preview says geometry line string. So all that's happening here is we're telling QGIS to make a line between one point, the place of birth, and another point, the Ataturk Stadium. And if I click OK, and then I make sure that my geometry type is line string, and I hit apply and OK, then we see some lines. Now, obviously, at this stage, it's useful to have a base map. So I'll go to my browser panel, I'll expand XYZ tiles, and I'll double click on OpenStreetMap. And I'll drag it underneath, and I'll obviously need to zoom out as well. Okay, so that's going to the pitch at the Ataturk Stadium. And what I'll also do, I need to zoom out a lot here, I will also change the coordinate reference system of the map by clicking on the button in the bottom right and going to, I'll choose WGS84 Studio Mercator. If you can't see it, just type 3857 in the filter box and down below you'll see that option and then you can click OK. So I'll zoom to this. So that's okay. What I would like to do now, I'd like to make the lines curve to be, well, I'd like to make them curved to show the um, lines as they actually would be in reality. And we can do that by double clicking on the layer, go to symbology, and in geometry generator, the reason the lines are straight and not following a curved path is because there's only two points in them, the origin point and the destination point. So we're going to add lots of intermediate points which will allow the line to be curved, especially for longer lines. So I'll click the expression button in the search box, I'm going to type in Densify, Densify. I'm going to choose Densify by count, I'll double click it. After the last bracket, I'll put a comma in and I'll type 100 and I'll close those brackets. And all that's doing is it's adding 100 intermediate points to those lines so that when they're over long distances on a global map projection, we can see a curve in them. So if I click OK and then apply, you'll see what I mean. I'll click OK again, and if I change the projection in the bottom right one more time, let's change it to Winkle triple, so I typed in Winkle, let's go to World Winkle Triple NGS, and click OK. We can see the lines are curved. I'm going to change it back to what it was before though, the 38571. OK, so we've successfully drawn those lines, that's great. And let's say we want to change the destination of these lines, the end point, to City of Manchester Stadium in Manchester. Well now we can do that easily by double clicking on the layer, going to Symbology, going to Geometry Generator, and I'll click the Expression button. And instead of the second point being the Ataturk, let's delete those, and let's go to our Fields and Values. And here we have our list of columns in our data set. We can just make sure we're in between the second set of brackets for make point. I'll double click Etihad X, I'll put a comma in, and I'll double click Etihad Y. So now this line won't go to Istanbul, it will go to Manchester. And I'll click OK and apply. So that's great. We, I, we saw a white line in the OpenStreetMap base layer just because I changed projection, but that should go away um, when you zoom in. So I'll zoom in a little bit and we've got a nice set of origins and destinations. If we wanted to put a point at the start of these lines, 
we could double click the layer again, go to Geometry Generator, and what we can do here is, it's probably easiest just to uh, make sure it's on Geometry Generator, and then hit the Copy button, so Duplicate Symbol Layer, and on the copied one, all we need to do is just change it from line string, multi-line string to point, multi-point. And we don't want to make a line here, so we want to make a point at the place of birth. So all we can do here is just delete the text, all of it apart from this. So we're going to make a point at place of birth X, place of birth Y. I'll hit apply and we get points to show where they're from. I can change the color and the style. I'll click OK. After that, it's a case of changing the colors as you wish. You can change all sorts of things if you want to. Sometimes with this, if you zoom in and out, you'll see things disappear, which can be somewhat frustrating. And it's not obvious why. Sometimes when you zoom in too far, uh, if it's not an actual permanent map layer like this, and it's only a geometry generator, when you zoom beyond the actual data, it might disappear. It's hard to explain, but the easiest way to get around that, if you want this as a permanent layer, is go to your symbology, go to where you have your geometry generator for the lines, and copy the text. Then go to your processing toolbox, and search for geometry by expression. So I'll double click that. The input layer is going to be Man City UCL 2023. The output poly uh, geometry type is going to be line. The geometry expression, I can delete what's there and just paste it into the box. I can also hit the expression button and paste it in there as well instead of just pasting it into the box, but that's fine. It's just in here. Click OK. The modified layer, I'm going to click browse and save it to a geo package. Given the file a name, I'll give the layer the same name as the file name. Click OK and I'll hit run. And I'll hit close. And there is my new layer. And that's a permanent layer. No problems with it when I zoom in and out now. And what I'll do is let's see if I can right click the original one and Go to properties and then what I'll do is I'll just copy the text which I used to make a point. I'll go back to my new layer and I will add a duplicate and a simple line for the duplicate. I'll switch to geometry generator. I'll paste that text in that made the points. I'll make it point multi point. Let's change that to black and black. OK. And there we have a map which shows the origins of players from Manchester City in the 2023 Champions League final. The very last thing I'll do here is I'll double click the new layer. And instead of single symbol, I'll go to categorized and I'll categorize it by role. I'll hit classify. Then we can see who's a manager, who's a starter and who's a substitute. So I'll click OK. And then I can expand that layer. I can turn them all off. So we've got the substitutes. We've got the starters. And we've got the manager. So this workflow really is all about how you can go from an idea of something you want to map to getting some data off the internet. Sometimes it's a manual process. Sometimes you can find a data set already made. Then getting that simple CSV text file into QGIS in map format and then styling it and then creating a completely new layer out of that expression using geometry by expression and then doing some more styling. 
And once you understand these kind of workflows and the possibilities of Geometry Generator and these kinds of expressions, you can do some really interesting things in QGIS. So hopefully you find that useful and you can apply it to your own work.